What's going on guys? Stevie for the Minute Masters here and today I'm going to show you how to remove that engine from your truck. So you're probably wondering why am I pulling the engine out of my truck? Um, well, it's not because I want to rebuild it and you know have a nice fresh engine and do a lot of horsepower mods. It's actually because a part of my frame is cracked. And uh, that part is the engine frame. Uh, cross member right under here okay right where the twin i-beam suspension bolts there the axle pivot there's a huge crack in the frame you'll get to see that fix uh, in a future video but in order to do it really well I have to pull the entire engine out and while I'm at it I might do a little gasket refresh on the thing but uh, nothing else so for those of you who've never pulled an engine out and this is something you're considering doing please do not get overwhelmed by the fact that it's just I mean it's a lot uh, back in the day, things were a whole lot more simple because it was just a carb. You didn't have power steering, you didn't have air conditioning, you didn't have a lot of stuff. So a lot of uh, the extra tubing and stuff that you see and uh, wires, that's all that stuff. So my process is going to be the same whether or not this is a V8 or a V6 or a straight 6 or whatever. Okay. So this happens to be the 5 liter 302 engine, Okay. but my process is the same. Pick a side, this side, this side, or the front, and just start by disconnecting things, okay? That way, you're not just reaching all over, disconnecting whatever you wanna disconnect. Number two, those things that you think you may forget where they go, label them. You have to do that. So let's, example. So I've got, uh, you have like a couple vacuum lines here, but you also have like one here, and then you've got a couple other random ones here, and maybe a couple wires and things that plug in, you know. If you undo those and you think that you may not remember them, label them. So I normally do that by putting a, you know, some tape on this and a tape on the receiving end, and I mark them. So I'll put like a one on this one and a one on that one. I know the two ones have to go together, two twos, two threes, so on and so forth, okay? So definitely label them. If you remove bolts, so if I was taking the throttle body off, you take that bolt off, get a flat sheet of cardboard, push the bolt through, label it, okay? And you know what? We're in the, we're in the modern 21st century here. All of us have smartphones or phones with cameras for the most part. Take a picture where it goes. So if you think you'll forget that bolt, boom, snap a picture of it, okay? So I've elected to begin this side here. So what am I gonna disconnect? So let's, let's pan around here. So on this side, you're gonna see your air conditioning hose right here. That's gonna to feed to the back of the compressor. Uh, you're also gonna see, let's see, you've got one right here that comes off your AC. So disconnect your two AC lines, right? Down here, you have your power steering. You disconnect your power steering hose. Then you're gonna come over here and you have this vacuum line that goes to your brake booster. You'll undo that. Now. I added this to the truck. This is my um, vent, and it goes to this um, oil filter here. Just undo that, okay? Then you're gonna come to your intake. You can leave the box, just disconnect this piece of tubing here, or from this tube all the way to the throttle body. It doesn't really matter that much. Then you're gonna look down here, and you're gonna see this harness right here. Well, you can either unplug it here at the source or over there. It, for ease of use, probably best you do it here. So you see where I'm going with this? You just you just pick you pick your side, you pick something, and you undo it. Um, you also have your throttle body cable coming out of the firewall here. Okay, so you disconnect the side. Then what we're going to do is we can say let's move to the front. So on the front here, you're going to want to take away your upper radiator hose if there's nothing in it. Just so happens mine is like really dry for some reason. So I can actually take it out without having to drain it. But you'll want to drain your radiator, remove your operator radiator hose. Then you're going to want to remove the actual radiator fan because the trick with the front is you're trying to give yourself this much space so when you disconnect the engine from the transmission, you have space to move it over and pull it up and out. Okay. So upper radiator hose, drain your radiator, remove your fan, remove the, ra the lower radiator hose, and then pull the entire radiator and uh, the shield out. You can leave the radiator in if you feel like it um, and just pull off the, uh, the fan shroud. Either way works. Like I said, more 
is you gain more by doing more. So it's not the usual more is less here. So whatever makes pulling the engine out easier, please, please do it. So then once we have the front done, we'll come to the side here and same thing. We'll disconnect this hose, label it, and then let's see down here, mostly what's on this side is your emissions, okay? And then some of your other AC things and heat. So like you have this one for your heat here, as well as this one here. You have this vacuum line. Down here you have more harness and more uh, vacuum lines. Also, before you start undoing anything that's electric, disconnect your battery, okay? Up until this point, for the most part, I was just touching on some mechanicals, but once I said unplug harness, go over and uh, unplug your battery, okay? And like I said, just take one piece at a time, okay? Put your favorite music on, have some beverages out here, put an umbrella to shield yourself from the sun, just get yourself comfortable, start aside, and keep working it over, okay? So I'm actually gonna begin this process. I'd love to bring you along, but there's really nothing very complicated about unplugging certain things, okay? If I think it's gonna be a little complicated, I'll actually bring you in. And probably the one for that will be disconnecting the transmission from the back of the engine. And then of course, um, the exhaust. That can be a little difficult sometimes. Um, one thing to keep in mind, if you have air conditioning and you disconnect it, that air conditioning, when you hook it back up later, has to be vacuumed out and then reinserted back in. You can't just click it all back together and hope it's gonna work. So guys, here we go. Okay, so I'm cooking up a bit of a shortcut here. So that's why, if you haven't noticed, there's some things clear over here and there's some things clear over here, although the intake is the biggest thing missing here. So what I'm doing right now is I'm removing the radiator fan. Now, if you've never removed one of these, one thing you'll observe is the fan blades. So see how these two are close together? This one's not. So that's the one that you're gonna have your wrench hand in here. That's the one you're gonna move. See how much room it gives you as opposed to between the other two, they're too close. So how I do this is I put two wrenches in here. So I put one wrench on the bolt I'm trying to remove and then I put another one on a, the one I'm not. And basically I'm like tightening this one while trying to undo this one. Um, it's good for what you think, about three of them. And then you get to that last one and then you'll notice right here on the shaft here, you see the teeth marks. I usually take a set of channel locks or water pump pliers or whatever you want to call them and I hold it there and I get that last one off, okay? So once I get this off, then I can commence with my little shortcut here that I'm cooking up for you. So here we are, the radiator fan is off. At this point now, you can remove the serpentine belt. Now you're probably wondering, why didn't I take the serpentine belt off first. Now, one, taking it off and getting around the fan is a little bit challenging. Um, two, you can either get it on or off with or without the fan on because of that huge gap in the fan blade. That's so you can pull your tensioner pulley right here. But the other reason I like to leave it on is because it keeps this pulley in place. The moment that everything gets loose, you can actually spin that around. Now, if you didn't know this already, this is how you remove your serpentine belt. Okay, so I'm gonna do this one-handed here. Okay, so watch. You just pull over the tensioner and you see how the belt gets loose? And voila, the thing comes off. Now, before you do that, take a picture of how the belt goes. You may think you know how it goes. And the picture that sometimes they have on your radiator support, if you haven't changed your radiator support out like I have, see, I don't have the picture anymore, um, is not as easy to look at as a picture, okay? But when you go to do this again, it's always fairly loose to get it on. If you feel like you're having to stretch the belt to get it on, you're doing it wrong. So take a picture right now so that you have it and then take your, your serpentine belt off and store it somewhere dry and clean. All right, now one last thing. Take your bolts off and like I said, put them through a piece of cardboard. All I do is I take a little screwdriver with my little guy right here and I just poke it through the box and then I can poke the bolts through and then just get a Sharpie marker and label them, okay? And I'm probably gonna fill up this box somewhat, so uh, make sure that you conserve space and keep everything kind of small. All right, I'm gonna get back to it. You notice something's missing. Yes, you are correct, the AC compressor is missing. So that shortcut I was cooking up for you, well, not only is it a shortcut, it's also gonna save you money. There's the AC compressor right over there. So here's how I figure it and 
I'm in the mechanical trades. So one of the things you'll understand about air conditioning is like I said in the beginning, if you were to unbolt this, you'd have to have somebody vacuum out the system so that it was you know, purged free, and then you'd have to recharge it, which means once you're done with this, you're gonna have to take your truck to somebody that specializes in air conditioning and have them do that for you if you don't have the equipment. So why spend the extra money when you can just take it and leave it all connected and plop it right over there? So to do that, it was just the four bolts, boom and boom, that hold it there, and two electrical connectors, and then of course the serpentine belt that was attached. And then, as I mentioned before, you just take your bolts, stab them into your bolt remember box over there, and you're good to go. So, hope you appreciate that trick. I'm gonna keep this rolling. So, I'm slowly getting this side, and I guess you could say part of the front, cleared. Now, this harness piece right here, okay? This one is a little tricky, but you have to look at it and observe closely. So when you look at it, you just see this plug, but you notice I can't take it off and it's not because of the tabs, okay? See this? This is a 10 millimeter nut right here. And believe it or not, it holds this plug in place. So you actually have to loosen this 10 millimeter bolt here, okay? And you'll see this plug retract out to one side and then you can undo the clips and pull the plug off, okay? Otherwise, you'll be looking at this for hours going, what in the hell did somebody do? Why is this not coming off? You know, cause you'll see this thing here that looks like it's missing the clip. Mine is like, cause there's like this end cap here, but all you do, 10 millimeter, undo that bolt and you can take this thing off later by undoing the clips. So here we are guys, lots of stuff disconnected. Very roomy in there. Matter of fact, I wish it could stay that roomy all the time. So mostly I've just disconnected everything. As you can see, I've kind of just piled it up along the sides. That's the easiest way to do it. That way you're not disconnecting and removing whole things out. Remember, this is not a huge restoration teardown. We're just getting the engine out. So one last thing I want to show you how to get off, which may look a little complicated, is your throttle cable, okay? So looking at it, there's no real bolts anywhere if you follow the cable along. And so you're probably wondering if you need to remove the throttle body or some other piece. No, it's actually a lot less complicated than that. So you take a pry bar, put it underneath here, and you take it right off. That simple, okay? But if you didn't know that, you would, you'd be puzzled by that. So I've decided to end the video here because as of right now, I do not have an engine hoist and I'm going to rent one because like many of you, I don't want to put the money out for it. It's cheaper to rent and I really don't have the space to store one. So there you go. I'm in the same category as a lot of you guys. Okay. So with that being said, you're probably wondering, well, I still have a lot to disconnect, at least on the transmission side. And that is true, but I want to leave the transmission mated to the engine for now, just because it adds stability. Number one to the transmission that's there and to the engine, you undo them both. And if I start, pull them apart, the transmission's gonna wanna flop down, the engine's probably wanna rock forward, and I'm just not gonna do that right now. Uh, I've also elected to leave a couple other things connected. So right here, I've left the power steering uh, connected because I just don't wanna undo it and just have it perpetually leaking out. Same with the coolant. I've decided to leave it full and leave it connected. Again, I probably could take that one off, but uh, you know, I've decided just to save it until that day. The other thing that is still connected, which you can't quite see, is the fuel system. So one thing I should have mentioned, in the beginning when you went and disconnected your battery, the other thing you should do if you're ever going to have to mess, mess with the fuel system is you should go and essentially run the system dry. Now the best way to do that and the way the manual says is you go down here to the passenger side kick panel and you look for this. This is your collision, uh, impact sensor, whatever. Basically, if you're in an accident, this thing kills your fuel system so fuel's not spilling all over the place and there's a fire, okay? But you'll see in there, there's like a red button. You pry up on that and it pops up and it disconnects the fuel system. You go over there, you, you turn the engine over a few times and your fuel system is bled. Now, you can do what I end up doing half the time is you can do the quick and dirty and just pull the fuel lines and yeah, you can get a little you know, little spray here and there, but honestly, there's gonna be fuel coming out of them no matter if you bleed them or not. So that's up to you guys. So I'll leave that 
connected as well. And so I'll leave the hood on, this way I can close it, I can come back, because like I said, not a whole lot of us have all the time in the world or all the tools, so uh, we're stuck with waiting and renting. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video thus far, and hopefully this has kind of helped you, you know, get in the mode of pulling your own engine because it really isn't that difficult. It just looks overwhelming because of, there's just a lot of accessories and things hooked up to essentially what is just a thing that contains mini explosions. That's pretty much it. So, if you wanna see the second video, I will have that up as a tile over here that you can click on at the end of the video, and that way you can go directly to part two. So this is the end of part one. So that's all for me, guys. Hit the subscribe icon over here. Check out some of my other videos, and especially go to part two if you wanna see the rest of this uh, engine pull. I'm Stephen from the Midmasters. Thanks for watching.